Hello, O-Doers. My name is Jose Ignacio, and we're doing another tutorial today. Now, like all businesses, Stealthy Wood always tries to seek out the best offers when purchasing goods or services from vendors. Now, this task may seem daunting, but thanks to Odoo, we have an easy way to simplify and speed up this time-consuming process with a Calls for Tenders feature. Now, typically, Calls for Tenders are used by public sector organizations mainly because they are often legally bound to them when purchasing something. In most countries, the laws state that all companies should have a fair chance at securing a public, pro uh, public procurement contract and that public money should be used as efficiently as possible. Now, however, private companies also strive to obtain optimal efficiency. And that's why, too, you know, they also use calls for tenders for their purchases. Now here at Stealthy Wood, we also value efficiency because we just run so efficiently. Now, which is why we use the calls for tenders feature to enhance the purchasing process. With this special procedure, we can invite multiple vendors to submit an offer for similar goods or services all at once. Now, when we have received all the offers, we can pick the most economical one, minimizing costs and increasing profitability in the most efficient way possible. Now, all this sounds great, right? So let's see how this is all set up in Odoo. All right, so we're gonna start here on the purchase dashboard. Now, the first thing we're gonna wanna go to is up here over to configuration. And we're gonna go into settings. And we got to enable purchase agreements. And then once we're done with that, we're gonna hit save. Now let's configure the calls for tenders by clicking on agreement type, calls for tender, and we're gonna hit into edit. Now, the very first thing we're going to see is agreement selection type. Now, let's change it to select one, only one RFQ exclusive, as we only want to select the best offer. Now, for the lines here, we can select these if the request for quotation should use the same product lines from the calls for tenders or not. Here, we do want to use them. And finally, quantities. We can also specify the product's quantities from the call for tender should be used to fill in new requests for quotations. That's also something that we're going to keep here. Now, once that this is all done, we just hit save. Now, got to create one just to show how this works. So we're going to go over to orders, purchase agreements, and we're going to click on to create. Now here we need to select the right agreement type. In our case, call for tender. Now if needed, we could also add the desired delivery date or set an agreement deadline by which we need to have, you know, received all of these offers. I want to make a quick note though, that you don't want to specify a vendor for calls for tenders. As you are already looking to get quotations from multiple vendors, just because it could cause a little bit of an issue. Now, next we add the products and the quantity and what we want to order. So we're going to add a line and our product, we're going to select our large desk. And how many do we want? Let's go with a big number 50. We're going to go with 50. Now for calls for tenders, you don't want to add a unit price because we want the vendors to give you their best quote. Now we can also write any terms and conditions right over here at the bottom of the agreement, just in case we have certain things we want to say, you know, as well, such as product specifications, requirements, pretty much in those types of things. But once we're done with that, go ahead and hit confirm. Now that this is done, we can invite vendors. Now we can request new quotations for the calls for tenders. And we're going to click on new quotation. And we're going to select a vendor. It doesn't matter here. We're going to select any vendor. And we invite them to participate in the call for tenders. Now, we're going to repeat this process for each vendor we want to invite. Now, the product lines and other things are already filled in since we configured this earlier. And see, that's the convenience of this. Now, once that we're done here, we're going to send by email to the vendor. And what we want to make sure too is also to edit the email template to make it a little bit more relevant. You know, you want to modify this as, you know, here is an invitation to participate in a call for tenders. And in our case, we're going to say, you know, we're from San Francisco, just so they know specifically where we're at. And that looks pretty good. So once we're done with that, we're going to get, go ahead and hit send. And beautiful. Now, you want to go back to the calls for tenders via the breadcrumbs, which is always convenient, and repeat this process now for the second vendor. And we're going to do it again. New quotation, select a vendor, 
send them an email, edit your template, and then send. And that's how you do it very quickly as a quick little TLDR. Now, go back to the calls for tenders, and let's go ahead and look at something else here now. Now, if you see, we have this uh, RFQs and orders button. And let's imagine that both vendors answered that email, and they each gave us a quote. That means we'll need to enter their offers manually. Now we're gonna click onto the vendor one RFQ and we're gonna edit it. And now we do have a unit price. They told us $1,100 USD and we hit save. Now remember the quantities can still be changed at this stage, but we don't need to worry about that for this example. And we're gonna go ahead and back over to the other RFQs. Vendor two's RFQ, edit the unit price. And this vendor told us 1,200 USD and we're gonna hit save. Now, once we have entered all the prices, we can validate the call for tenders. And by doing so, we just need to go back to the call for tenders and validate, and that's how easy it is. Now, if you kind of notice, the call for tenders status has moved to bid selection. And what this basically means now is if we click into the RFQ's order smart button again, we can quickly see that vendor one has provided the best offer in terms of price. So let's confirm that RFQ and turn it into a purchase order. So we're gonna click on the vendor one RFQ, confirm it. Now earlier, we configured the calls for tenders to select only one RFQ. So all of the other RFQs are automatically canceled. No more manual submission, resubmission, or cancellations. Now we're gonna go back to the RFQs as well. And if you kind of notice, RFQ status is canceled. Now. If we go back even further now over to the calls for tenders, you can see also that its status is now closed because we chose one RFQ and confirmed it into a PO. And once that that's done, it automatically knows to close them. So if we go over to the purchase dashboard, we can also see both of the RFQs, but now one is turned into a purchase order and the other has been canceled. And the very last thing I'd like to show you guys is a trick that might be useful if you're using reordering rules. Now, if you aren't familiar with reordering rules, be sure to check out the other Odoo tutorial videos about replenishment for more information. Now, for those of you who are using reordering rules, let's go back over here to the products and products and select our large desk. If we go on over to the purchase tab below and we hit edit, we can ask Odoo to propose a call for tenders instead of a draft purchase order if necessary. This way, when the large desk runs low in the Stealthy Wood inventory, Odoo will automatically trigger its reordering rule and create a call for tenders instead of a draft RFQ. Then I can go into the automatically created call for tender and invite vendors, just like we did earlier. Now, as you can see, Obtaining the best prices from multiple vendors is now easier than ever with the Odoo Purchase app. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.